periyar fight fought against the suppression or oppression of women we can say the first feminist in tamil nadu a poor woman called cheria a peasant woman she married a agricultural worker called raman cheria was not ready to go to the landlord's house the first night raman took her to a remote place to hide her from the landlord people go in search of her and they went to that hiding place and they abused her and they raped her but cheria was very brave lady and cheriamma went to the kisan sabha meetings and spoke in that meeting bravely and uh, she spoke to give inspiration to other ladies to fight against the landlordism then only we can get independence and identity as brave women domestic violence are rampant in kerala i think comparatively maybe it is less in kerala but more than 30% women are undergoing domestic violence in kerala also we conducted night walk uh, to uh, to make women brave to walk outside during night even the night but it is arranged so many women participate in it we want to get the right to get outside at any time the women want that is that was the slogan and so many women participated on this that was an inspiring campaign comrade all except me spoke in tamil tamil is a very beautiful language and i like it very much but i can i cannot speak in tamil but i can follow the spirit of other speakers who spoke about what what they have spoke about i cannot follow word by word but uh, understand the spirit of their speech i first of all want to congratulate cpam tamil nadu state committee to took the leadership of the campaign on gender issues gender issues are not only the issues of women and it should be led by the whole society and cpam took the leadership of the gender issues and the campaign again i want to thanks express my thanks to present as some books important books instead of bookcase i got two books one is about alexandra kolondoy the great revolutionary the great leader of russian revolution this is the collected works of collection of alexandra kolondoy's works and edited by parvati menon when she was elected alexandra kolondoy was elected in russian government after the russian great russian revolution 1917 she became commissar and director she gave the leadership to pass some important laws for the emancipation of women in russian government revolutionary government the book deals with her essays about her experience in the russian revolution the other book is listen to my case it is written by justice k chandru he is very famous he is also a legendary fighter especially on dalit and women issue this is the experience of his court court experience when women approach the courts of tamil nadu and to precious gifts a special thanks for that i want to speak about the subject our subject today is the issue of the atrocities against women violence and atrocities against women why it is happening that is the important question whether women are the second sex from the time beginning itself we are finding the answer finding the roots of the oppression of women we are trying to do that 
ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ದ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ ದಿ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ರೂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸಪ್ರೇಷನ್ ಓರ್ ಒಪ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ವುಮೆನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಫೈನ್ಸ್ ಓರ್ ದಿ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಸ್ಟ್ ಐಡಿಯಾಲಜಿ ಫೈನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸೋಷಿಟಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಮೋಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಒಕ್ಕರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಲೆನಿನ್ ಸಾರಿ ಎಂಗಲ್ಸ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಇನ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಫೇಮಸ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಒರಿಜಿನ್ ಆಫ್ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಎಂಗಲ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಆಪ್ರೇಷನ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದಿ ಒಕ್ಕರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋಯ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದಟ್ ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿ ಈಸ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಿ ಪಿ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಇನಾಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಆನ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಿ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಐಡಿಯಾಲಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೈ ದಿ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಾಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಟೇಕನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿ ಪಿ ಐ ಎಮ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪೇನ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟೀಸ್ ಪರ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಆನ್ ವಿಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ after that and have a very good campaign and discussion throughout the country and we think we are we decided to have it in grassroots level it is not happened in grassroots level we should have it to take this discussion in the grassroots level itself what happened in india after independence we all know that the pre independence days indian society is in a feudalist society feudalist mode of society and after independence when the capitalism became to grow the something happened here that the capitalist mode of society didn't exp- overthrow the feudalist mode of society joining hand in hand without eradication of pre capitalist relations the bourgeoisie tried to develop the capitalist mode of society in india now in indian society these two things are existing one side the development of capitalism and the consumerist culture etc that suppressed women and uh, the mode of that society is thinking women is a commodity and uh, second sex at the same time the feudalist mode of society is also existing bourgeois landlord government is existing in india in party program we explained that our indian independence after independence the government of india is a government led by the big bourgeoisie and joining hands with the feudal culture feudalist feudalism and also depending or having collaboration with foreign capital that is why the exploitation is rampant in india we cannot get rid of this exploitation or em- the emancipation of women will never happen completely without demolishing this kind of government or policy in india so we have to fight against both feudalist attitude and also the capitalist consumerist culture in our country marxism traces the roots of women subordination in such kind of growth in the society and uh, i am coming to kerala's scenario that before independence we have a great struggle in kerala 
against the feudalist culture. Here in Tamil Nadu also, Periyar, he is a, we can say, scientifically, Periyar fight, fought against the suppression or oppression of women. We can say the first feminist in Tamil Nadu. And he is deadly against the, even the dress code in Tamil Nadu. And very inspiration, we got inspiration from Periyar itself here. In Kerala also, there are so many social reformers who fought against the feudal culture, especially the exploitation of women there in that period. In 1930s and 40s, in Kerala, our society, uh, in our society, women are suffering under this landlordism. August Bible wrote in his book, famous book, Women in Past, Present and Future, that in Kerala, Kerala uh, was not formed at that time. In that area in Malabar, the landlordism is more severe than the slavery in Greece. In, so there are some customs according to the landlords for the poor women. Women cannot uh, cover the upper part of their body. And there are some cruel customs such as the virginity breaking is the right of a landlord. That, is, that was the custom in that place. When a poor peasant's daughter get married, she cannot go directly to his, her husband's house. She had to go to the landlord's house and it was the landlord who has the right to break her virginity and after, only after that she can go to her husband's house. There are so many heart-touching incidents in Kerala at that time. A poor woman called Cheria, a peasant woman, she married a agricultural worker called Raman and Cheria was not ready to go to the landlord's house the first night. She refused that and Raman took her to a remote place to hide her from the landlord. But the landlord's people go in search of her and they went to that hiding place and they abused her and they raped her. When they came to her hut to get her rape, she pleaded that, I'm not well. My eyes are not well because of the conjunctivity. Please allow me to escape or don't uh, disturb me this time. Please give me freedom. But the landlord said, I am not coming here to look at your eyes. I want something else. And brutally raped that, that, that lady. And when Raman came back home after his work, he found that his beloved wife is lying there with blood coming from their eyes and her both of her eyes lost the sight after that incident. But Charya was a very brave lady and Charyamma went to the Kisan Sabha meetings and spoke in that meeting bravely and uh, she spoke to give inspiration to other ladies to fight against the landlordism. Then only we can get independence and identity as brave women. And that Charyamma, not only one lady, there are so many ladies where there in Communist Party workers, among Communist Party workers and also this agricultural front, they were fighting against landlordism to get freedom. So we can find that the, the suppression of women or the exploitation of women is according to the mode of society, according to the social 
relationships. But after independence, everyone expected that after independence, we all get freedom and women also get freedom, but nothing happened after independence. And the situation is same in other parts of India. We can find that the condition of Dalits and women are the same. They are under slavery after the long years of independence also. What is that telling us? We should have to fulfill our democratic revolution. That is why CPIM in its program written that our next aim or our, the, uh, our aim is to fulfill the democratic revolution. That is people's democratic revolution is CPIM's aims. Bourgeoisie didn't complete it the aim of democratic revolution and they are hand in hand with the feudalist culture, all the superstitions are here, casteism is here, oppression against women is here, atrocities are here. So CPIM slogan is to complete the democratic revolution under the leadership of the people, that is people's democratic revolution. And the program of People's Democratic Revolution states, after the People's Democratic Revolution, what will be the status of women? What is the program of CPM to fulfill the empowerment of women? That is very clear. The first agricultural revolution is must and land reform is the very important thing. And the, the exploitation by the casteism should be abolished and there should be some laws should be enacted to abolish the caste apartheid or caste system, uh, caste based atrocities and there are so many things and then only we can achieve the complete freedom of women. In Kerala 1957 through the election a left government was in office under the leadership of E.M. Shankaran Nambudiripal, a left, front, left government came to power in Kerala. What is the difference? Some people are saying every politicians and every political parties are the same. We cannot think so. There are some differences in Kerala. After 1957, there is a very good advancement in Kerala, especially in the status of women. Atrocities are there. I am came to coming to that. But there are there is a very good improvement in the status of women in Kerala. The literacy rate that is very high in Kerala. Women literacy rate, it is more than 90 in Kerala. And the human development index in some indices, Kerala is in the forefront. As you all know, Kerala is a low income state. The revenue income is too less in Kerala and Kerala became a miracle in some of the development indices. How we achieved that? That is the question. In human development index, Kerala is in the forefront and the participation of women in the society, there is a very good increase. But in the workforce, we didn't achieve that. And to prevent all the atrocities, that is another thing, another reverse thing in Kerala. In 1957 onwards, in Kerala legislature, we have some people friendly, women friendly laws. We enacted some laws there. 1957, the first days after, just after the taking the oath, our government, Kerala government enacted uh, or declared an ordinance before enacting the law the before 16 days the left government passed an ordinance on eviction stay staying the eviction up to that time the landlords were evicting the poor people from the lands and the poor women are not getting education girls are not get education even men are not getting education only the those who have money are getting, were getting education at that time. And when we passed that ordinance, 
even before 20 days of the office. Uh, we came to office in Kerala. After that, we got a grip in the land where we were staying in Kerala. And in that same government, Joseph Mundasheri Master, the first uh, education minister, passed the education law and decided to have the public education institutions even in the grassroots level. We started to build schools and we started to educate the poor peasants, uh, children, and that is the beginning stage. And also, health sector also, Dr. Ayar Menon, he passed a law on public health system and the people get good this treatment uh, or health facilities in public sector. And after that, we came several times into office in Kerala under the leadership of Communist Party. There are more than five governments that were in Kerala, now also left parties ruling in Kerala. And each and every time when Communist Party came to office, we enacted certain revolutionary laws to maintain the equality or to make equal the citizens in Kerala. And the Land Reform Act, that is also a great milestone in Kerala. After Land Reform Act, each and every family got a piece of land as their own and the housing campaign also started. Government took the leadership to build houses for the poor that is continuing now itself in Kerala. The second Panerai Sarkar also continuing the, the housing program that is life mission. Last government, the first Panerai government declared four missions following the previous left governments. One is the reforms in education sector, education reforms mission. And the other is the reforms in health sector, Ardram mission. And one is Haridha Kerala mission to rejuvenate the wells and the rivers to reproduce the groundwater, everything, cleaning, etc. That is a very revolutionary thing. And the fourth one is life mission. We are uh, taking the uh, numbers of the persons who have no houses to reside, no land, no houses, and we were building houses for the houseless, homeless people in Kerala. That is also a revolutionary thing. Last uh, government, the first uh, Penrai government, built more than three lakh houses for the homeless and uh, give priority to the widows and uh, uh, the single women family and they got houses for their own. That is also a revolutionary thing. Without the practical thing like this, we cannot make the emancipation of women. In Kerala, the not only literacy rate, but in some indices of health also, we are in the forefront. The child mortality rate, that was also again become a revolutionary achievement. In 2016, when the first Penrai Sarkar came to office, the child mortality rate was 12 out of 1,000 live birth. But we want to have a single digit on that. And we fight hard. We fought hard. We had a STG uh, for ours, ourselves in our state. The Sustainable Development Goal, 22 goals we declared in health sector. And in education sector also we declared some goals. And in health sector, we give focus to newborn child, pregnant mothers, and the health of the women and we got a very good achievement after the mission. And when we examine in 2020, the child mortality rate go below 6 out of 1000 live births. And Niti Ayog's report came and it is 5.4 in 2020. And that's a great achievement. We worked on the women and child sector for that. And maternal mortality rate also. We worked 
hard to save the poor women from maternal mortality and we improved the delivery units all the delivery units we improved a lot to hospital infection control and to examine examination of the pregnant mother frequently and also to find out whether they are anemic or not and what is the health condition of the women and we achieved a lot in 2016 our maternal mortality rate is 67 out of 1 lakh birth and the un declaration came on 2015 and the sdg goal came sdg out of the sdg 17 sdg goals sdgs the third component is on health and uh, it contains also the women health issue and uh, un declared that up to 2030 we should achieve one goal that the maternal mortality rate should be reduced to 70 out of this 1 lakh births and our government central government also declared all the states should work hard to reduce the maternal mortality rate to 70 but at that time kerala's maternal mortality rate is 67 but we declared our own goal we had a very good slogan on that that is 30 by 20 and 20 by 30 30 by 20 and 20 by 30 we have a very good team to work on that doctors and nurses asha workers a expert group especially for that and we worked hard when we examined it in 2019 the maternal mortality rate reduced to 43 out of 1 lakh births from 67 to 43 and we got some awards from central government i went there as a minister at that time and seven states got some awards from central government to keep the maternal mortality rate up to 70 but we got kerala got two awards one is to make it below 70 and the other is the lowest in india uh, for the lowest in india and that is the left government's aim and left government's practical work to achieve the these things but when we speak about the, and also the uh, male female sex ratio also that is also good in kerala 1084 females for 1000 males that is the sex ratio in kerala nowadays there is a thing that 0 to 6 age groups it had fallen we didn't know what happens uh, there somebody is asking always was to give rinda and the very leadership is asking us what why it is happening in kerala is there any male preference a son preference there there is it is not uh, uh, visual in our society because if a family have two sons they are waiting for a little girl also the third child in kerala that is the cultural situation or social condition in kerala but we cannot say fully like that maybe some biological reason or maybe some thing in guys Uh, i cannot say uh, totally deny that thing but there is no visual thing like sun preference in kerala we are examining that thing and we are working on that also but among these good things we can say that there are two great laws in kerala or drawbacks in kerala one is the low work participation rate for among women the national work participation rate is 24 i think something round like that but in kerala it is about 30% but during this covid situation it become low it become low in nationally and it become low in our state also we are fighting against that thing how can we emancipate the women without bringing the women to the social works social production the angels and all other marx and engels our left thinkers said that the emancipation of women have happened only when women come out from the home to work for the social production 
and we are also working on that how to bring back children or bring out children uh, this women from home to society to work and our kudumbasri is one of the very good measures on that we formed the self help group called kudumbasri in 1998 onwards and now lakhs of women are there in kudumbasri ayal kootam or kudumbasri self help group they are coming out and forming little groups and they are having some social reform activities and also entrepreneurship kudumbasri is encouraging people encouraging women to have some entrepreneurship in the society to make women earning members little bit but it become a good inspiration for women to come out from the kitchen or from the from home to the society and to become a social worker now we are giving skill development training to kudumbasri workers not only a small scale unit of entrepreneurship but to have a skilled work or skill development help kudumbasri to enter into it sector and all the modern sectors for their entrepreneurship and they are having so much activities on that and they are giving uh, wages for poor women and women are getting works through kudumbasri also and there are small scale industries in kerala we introduced gender audit in each and every department and gender budgeting is there and we are examining whether each and every department is doing gender friendly and what is their budget what is their activities is there any gender component in each and every department we are examining that gender audit is there and that way also we are trying to take women out of their home based activities or uh, the slavery inside the home and uh, the other thing not only the work participation the other evil is definitely the increasing violence against women the societal attitude it is not changing fully even though there are so many social reformers so many women fighters uh, there were there were from the cheriyama to the so many brave women who fought against women oppression but the society is not changed fully the patriarchal views are the okay okay the patriarchal attitudes are there in the society and now we are fighting against that thing our government is also doing so many things to reduce the patriarchal or to get rid of the patriarchal views and when i was there in the government i am dealing with i was dealing with not only health but also women and children and social justice department our government have the first panarai government formed a separate department for women previously it was under social justice department women children differently abled transgenders and old ages that it was dealing with the uh, women and children social justice department but 2017 onwards we have a separate department on women and children and that department did a lot of thing for the emancipation of women at first we have the domestic violence rules we formed the domestic violence rules for the domestic violence act and we have so many seminars and brainstorming sessions and awareness campaigns about the domestic violence act domestic domestic violence are rampant in kerala i think comparatively maybe it is less in kerala but more than 30% women are undergoing domestic violence in kerala also sometimes it is severe and sometimes it is in a small scale but it is there domestic violence is there so we started campaign on domestic violence act and about the laws and about the uh, the uh, chances to uh, utilize the law for the poor people we are uh, having tv uh, shows and also in radio and printed media 
and also some we are utilizing social media we are making short films and uh, uh, like the short videos on that and our slogan was no more compromise ini venda vittu veecha we had a great campaign on that and be brave go ahead was another campaign and we conducted night walk uh, to uh, to make women brave to walk outside during night even the night but it is arranged so many women participated even ias officers when we organized that without political bias so many women came college girls came outside for the night walk it is a message someone asked me teacher you are taking women outside home at night what you are what is your intention night is for sleep for sleeping but we want to get the right to get outside at any time the women want that is that was the slogan and so many women participated on this that was an inspiring campaign comrade and it is continuing in kerala and uh, uh, we introduced or appointed women protection officers on all the 14 district in kerala and gave ensured the services of an advocate to give protection order maintenance order and custody and residence order to get it easily there was there is a, there, there is services of an advocate also we appointed that we have 84 institutions recognized by women and children department as service providing centers etc i am elabor- not elaborating all these things so many steps taken we have one stop centers in each and every district functioning very well and we started a special app during these covid days because the domestic violence increased during covid days hum tum ek kamre mein band ho at that time everyone is under uh, inside the home uh, husband and wife and the uh, they talk one and two and start fighting each other and women suffered a lot they cannot even phone uh, to the uh, department or the officials because the husband is sitting there or brother is sitting there father is sitting there and we created an app so that they can message uh, their grievances to our uh, app and we got so many messages and uh, we acted well to save them from these atrocities that is why that, that way we decreased the the uh, the great atrocities or uh, murders or suicides etc that become low because of these activities and we started a on call center uh, called 181 mitra 181 under the women and children department we started mitra 181 any women can call at any time to 181 and there there there, there will be our team and uh, Uh, we got in 2020 we got 126821 complaints through mitra 181 at once we started action on that out of this about 30000 was according to uh, about the domestic violence and we acted well i am not uh, bringing each and everything here but gender awareness campaign and uh, the change in the Uh, society patriarchal mind of the society change in the attitude without the change in the minds of the people minds of the society we cannot ensure the emancipation of women we cannot get to. there are laws there posh act is the domestic violence act is the several acts are there for women but without knowing uh, where to uh, they, they uh, where to go for, to get this act, uh, act, acts enacted or to get help we cannot uh, improve the condition of women especially the patriarchal society is the the policy of central government is the and we should have it to fight against both feudalist culture and capitalist consumerist society and also to improve or the thinking of left thinking the socialist mode of society only can give complete freedom for women and we should campaign for a socialist society it is written in our constitution everything 
uh, democracy, secularism, socialism, everything is there in our con preamble. The very preamble of, of the constitution is giving assurance. Democracy means perfect equality and opportunity. Socialism means the actual democracy. But without having the change to socialist model society, we cannot have complete freedom. But we have to fight to get individual response or get uh, something in the society uh, according to the uh, experience. And we are fighting and AIDWA is fighting, CPIM is fighting. I request all of the society, all of who gathered here to join in the fight. We can fight together, we can achieve some result and the end result is after the revolution it will happen, comrades. Someone is asking whether revolution is happening or not. Someone has never happened. Sometimes someone are saying, but it is happening. Some revolution is happening. Even in Kerala, after 1957 onwards, everything happened. That is also 1957 a revolution happened. That is land reforms. A piece of land, ownership of a piece of land, that is a revolution. But then revolution, that will also happen. We should have to no other choice in front of us then we should have to fight for that and we have to fight to emancipate women for women's equality and empowerment in Kulab Sindhava.